Let's stand to our feet and give praise to God tonight. Wow, what praise. What praise. Something can happen right now. What praise. Just keep what you got right now. God's getting ready to do something great. I'm going to preach. Don't, don't worry. I'm going to preach. Well, I'm going to attempt to preach. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to at least attempt to be preaching. But I got this last week. This is from a man in our church, Wayne McGee. On October the 11th, 2016, I was seen by Dr. John R.A. Joe at MD Anderson for a second opinion of the diagnosis of bone cancer I'd received from Dr. Jane Ritchie here in Alexandria on July the 12th. Dr. R. A. Joe said after reviewing all of my medical records and tests for the week prior to my appointment, he could not see any evidence of bone cancer. He told me for 13 years I've been... He said, for 13 years, I've been looking at this type of scan to determine the severity of bone cancer. I hate to dispute another doctor's diagnosis, but I can see no evidence of any bone cancer. Also told me that the treatment of prostate cancer appeared to be working as my PSA levels were dropping. After being prayed for on August the 7th, the last time Brother Tisdale was here, I had claimed my healing and felt a peace about it. And Dr. R. Joe's diagnosis was the confirmation of my healing. Not only was he healed of bone cancer, he is healed of the symptoms related to my COPD. That's what God does. He just, God just messes around and heals bone cancer. When, when God not even, he, he, he can just take care of any situation here tonight. And I guess I've been seeing miracles where we've been and at POA. I've just got the faith tonight that before I ever start, that God is going to allow healing to be in this room tonight. So if you came here specifically for healing for your body or for your emotions or for your spirit, just step out right now. If you came for healing, I want you to step up to the front. Just like we do, we get the Holy Ghost. You came. God bless you, ma'am. That's it. You came for healing tonight. Come on right on up here. You came for healing. Come on, that's it, sir. You came specifically for healing. We believe in divine healing. There's a promise coming down your dusty road. That's it. If you don't mind, step over here, sir. That's it. Come on, brother. Come on, ma'am. That's it. Come on down the aisle. You came here. Because I told people to bring people that needed healing. So come on tonight. And would you do me a favor, would the ladies get to my left and would the men get to my right? That, that, let's just do it that way because I'm ready to do something. I'm just moving. The Holy Ghost had none of this plan. Come on, ma'am. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost as well as give you your healing tonight. We believe that. That's it. Keep coming. Did that for you this morning. That's it. Keep coming. Come on, men. Come over here with me because I'm getting ready to do something. That's it. We're going to believe healing. Men, that's it. Unless you're, that's your companion. Come on over here. That's it, brother. You can come. Ladies here and men over here. That's it. We're going to do something. You know what we're going to do? I have always found when I started praying for other people or other situations, God moved in my situation. And so tonight, it's not that you were selfish, but tonight, instead of all of us just laying hands on you, I'm going to ask you, lady to lady and man to man, to turn to that person that's beside you. Would you do that for me? That's it. Just turn to that person beside you, man to man. Would you lay hands on that? That's it. Lay hands. Connect right there, men. Now, what you're going to do is instead of you praying for your healing, and instead of you praying for your healing, and instead of you praying for your healing, or you praying for your healing, you're going to pray for that person beside you's healing. And while you're praying for that person, I believe God's going to heal you while you're praying for that person to receive their healing. I want everybody in this room to join hands, and I want you to hold it towards heaven. And now, God, through the power and the authority of your name, I command healing to come into this room right now. Let the power of your blood and the power of your name move in this room right now. I command every disease and sickness that are in these bodies to go. You are a miraculous God. God, we've been seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. And tonight, I remind you that this is a church that believes
believes your truth and your doctrines. And you said that these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, great God, as a confirmation of what I'm getting ready to preach, let healing come into this place. Let miracles begin to be formed. Speak it over you gentlemen. I speak it over you ladies. In the name of Jesus, I speak it. Ma'am, I speak it over you in Jesus' name. I speak it. Now, here's what I want this whole congregation to do. Here's what I want this whole congregation to do. I promise you, if it breaks loose, I'll take care of it. Because I'm going to mention a few things about the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to preach long tonight. And then we're going to give an altar call to the, all of our guests and all of our visitors and all of our preachers. If you came to hear a certain sermon tonight or hear me preach, I'm probably not going to be doing much of that. We're going to minister in the Holy Ghost tonight. But I feel like that in the apostolic church, we are such reaction is praising. That sweet brother that's back there in that wheelchair, uh, I went back and prayed for him. And he hasn't walked out of that wheelchair yet, but I believe he's going to walk in Jesus' name. I'm just not into high blood pressure and fibromyalgia. I believe God, like I preached at the Kentucky camp, I believe God can give us people that get out of wheelchairs and blind eyes open up and deaf ears unstop. Now, in the apostolic church, if that sweet brother would get up right now and run around this church, it would be over. You'd dance, fall out, would have to take some of your home drunk. So here's what I want to do, gentlemen and ladies and this congregation. I want to praise God as if what we've been praying for, we just received. Would you do that? Well, go ahead, brother. That's it. Instead of waiting to it happen, praise him because it is happening. Well, look at you, brother. Go ahead. Praise him. Not because it's already happened. Praise him because it is going to happen. Praise him for your healing. Praise him for your healing. I said, sweet brother. Praise Him for your healing. Praise Him for your deliverance. Praise Him because He's answered that prayer. Though right now it may not look like it, praise Him anyway. Oh, hallelujah. Man, there's a spirit of praise. You can make your way back to your seat. And every step you take, you say, in Jesus' name, I'm claiming my healing. Every step you take, you say, in Jesus' name, I'm claiming my healing. Matthew chapter 5. In Jesus. I said, every step you take, say, in Jesus' name. I claim my healing. I claim my healing in Jesus' name. What a privilege it is to be here. And the Woodwards, they just unbelievable. you got an unbelievable pastor. Thank you for sharing him with us. Thank you for sharing him with the Apostolic Church. We're very blessed by your pastor, his wife, and his family. And then to see how that God brought Pastor Jack and Kathy into this church and their family. And how when Pastor Woodward is traveling, you're so secure and founded with, with uh, Pastor Lehman. I mean, has God been good to us or what? They have, they have taken such good care of us. Uh, we hate leaving here tomorrow. Uh, I hate leaving the room that they put me in. It's got windows all the way around it, and it looks up over that beautiful river. And it, Mickey, Mickey started screaming this afternoon. She said, it's raining. And she said, no, it's not raining. What's going on out there? And I looked out the window. I did, all I had to do was look. It was out a window, which we love. And, and it was fish that was on top of the water. And making all these things look like it was raining. And we just got so excited. 
I mean, it, it was just, it was fantastic. We've experienced a lot of Canada that I'm thankful for. I was here years and years ago at Harvey Camp. Anybody ever been to Harvey Camp? Oh, I got an amen there. I think I got more there than I did on the Holy Ghost. You got, yes, yeah, sir, I've been to Harvey Camp. Well, I want to tell you, I've been to Harvey Camp. I preached there twice. And our bathtub and our shower wasn't like this bathtub and shower. In fact, my bathtub and shower was the lake behind our cabin. And folks, you know, when I get through preaching, I'm a little sweaty, so I'd get through preaching those youth camps. We, the, the afternoon was bad enough. But when you went, after sun had gone down to Harvey Camp in that lake, and you went out there to take your shower and bath, if you hadn't talked in tongues, you got stammering lips and an unknown tongue right there. I'm telling you what, no place like it. I love you, and it's great to be back here, and we do feel very much a part of you. I'm asking you, please, Tuesday, to pray for America. We need your prayers. Uh, what goes on Tuesday will affect you, and it will affect the world. And let's just pray that God will help us. Matthew 5 and 6, and I'll read that, and then I will go to another scripture. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen? And in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Tonight, I want to preach on the Holy Ghost. Would you put your Bibles down and would you help me give God a great big praise tonight? God bless you. you may be seated thank you for standing so long and I appreciate the honor that y'all have given us in the way that you have given such honor to me and Mick and we appreciate it so very much God has always from the very beginning of time had a desire to dwell with man we don't even open our Bibles but just a page or two when all of a sudden we're thrust into this beautiful garden where that God for a man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed the breath of life into him, and man became a living soul. And God looked at that and said, I can do better. And so he made a woman. I just got all the women. I just got all the women bow right there. Okay? But we know the story. And God placed in the garden a tree, and he, he told them not to touch that tree. And he was there to have fellowship with them. And he was there to experience with them and to have fellowship with them and to walk with them in the cool of the day. And they go to the tree like a martin to its nest. It's amazing all the hundreds of trees that were there. But the one he said, do not touch, they went directly to. And you know that God put them out of the garden. But before he did, it wasn't that when they ate that tree that all of a sudden they felt so sinful that, that began to happen, but it was when that God came looking for them. And God said, Adam, Adam, where art thou? And that's a good lesson for we men. He wasn't looking for the lady. He was looking for the man. Adam, Adam, where art thou? And from that very call, when they were placed outside of the garden, God continued to find an opportunity where that he could get back in the presence of man. So after a while, God brings Moses to the top of the mountain, and there God begins to give him dimensions and begins him to give the layout of what is called as the tabernacle plan. And he gave them specifically each uh, piece of furniture and what each piece of furniture represented. And I pray that every morning. But in that tabernacle was the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where God said that I'm going to dwell. And he said, this is going to represent me. And so he was placed in the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God was. And it was a shadow. It was a smoke by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. It was God directing them and God leading them. And as we know, Israel turns and walks away and then God says, I'm going to go again. And he comes to Solomon's temple and there he gives this magnificent building that costs millions of dollars. Just the 
priest's garment was like $56,000. It's a magnificent building, but when they went to have the dedication, they made sure of one thing, that the Ark of the Covenant was there. And when they brought that in, God was so pleased that the minister could not even minister. The glory of the Lord filled that house because once again, he was in fellowship with man. When you go to Zerubbabel's temple, after Solomon's temple was toned down, again, Zerubbabel's temple was there. God finding a place where that he could fellowship with man. And then we know how, as I mentioned this morning, 400 years of silence. And God said, I have tried all of these things, but now I will make me a temple and I will go dwell there. And you know the story. They crucified him and they hung him there on the cross and there... Christ died, the Son of God, the flesh of God, and Christ died. So we have this picture and we have this understanding that Easter comes, but God still had a desire to dwell with man. So God said they destroyed the tabernacle, they destroyed the temple, they destroyed Zerubbabel's temple, they destroyed my temple. So my last plan is is I'm going to place myself somewhere where that, that cannot be attacked and destroyed. And I'm going to get on the inside of them. And when you read Exodus 25 and 8, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. God chose that his next dwelling place through the baptism of the Holy Ghost was going to be inside of your temple. And tonight, for those of you that's visiting with us, this church knows what we're doing tonight. It's not about us, it's about you. If you have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you have never spoken with tongues, tonight is all about you. We're not here to get our blessings met. We're not here. We've done that for three nights or three services. We are here. That if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that before you leave this place, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Now, What we must understand is this book is powerful. Verses are just as important as the other. But I want to emphasize something here right now, tonight, that's very important. The first eight verses of chapter of Acts, when you look as he proclaims the last recorded words of Jesus, when Dr. Luke is writing them, when you know that it's the last words of anyone, you take notice. We sit around bedsides listening to the last words of a mother, of a father. They're so significant to us. And tonight, when you look at the book of Acts, Luke is recording the last words of Jesus. Now, he could have said anything he wanted to say. He could have taken any subject he wanted to take. He could have talked about anything he wanted to talk about. But this particular word... Jesus' last words, he talks about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he begins to talk about how important it is and that you need to go to dwell and receive it. Even though the Lord had been with his disciples personally for three and a half years, which means they were privileged to receive the greatest teaching that any human could ever have heard. They needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pause here. For those of you that's never had the opportunity to be baptized in the name of Jesus, tonight would be a great night for you to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And that there is always a great discussion about whether we should baptize accordingly, word-wise, uh, 28, 19 of the book of Matthew. And people said, I would rather take the words of Jesus than to take the words of the apostles. Let me tell you something. That would be contradictory to the word of God. Second of all, let me tell you something. The apostles did what Jesus told them to do in Matthew 28, 19. They fulfilled that scripture. And I'm going to explain that to you. Do you really think, do you really think that Almighty God would robe himself in flesh and come to this earth and give his life and go through every, listen to me young people, go through everything he went through for his disciples not to have a full understanding about what he wanted to propagate when he left. 
They knew how to baptize. They knew what to do. They knew where they to go. So he told them, let me tell you something. You're going to the upper room and God is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And that's where you get Acts 2, 1 through 4. When he says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Those of you that's visiting with us tonight, what you have to understand that there is a characteristic of this outpouring, this phenomenon. When they were filled with the Holy Ghost, you will find that they all spoke with tongues. In fact, in the Bible, it teaches that speaking with tongues is the initial physical evidence that a person has been baptized with the Holy Ghost. There is no infilling without this particular sign. The prophet Isaiah, some 750 years prior, had predicted this phenomenon and was quoted in Isaiah 28, 11 and 1 Corinthians 14, 21. There are five accounts of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. And in three of those accounts, that person spoke with tongues. To those of you in this room that's never spoken with tongues, I want to tell you that I have, and hundreds here have, and four did here this morning that's in this room tonight. And tonight, before you leave here, you're going to be speaking with tongues. On three of those accounts, it writes that. On the other two, it gives the details of where you understand that they received the Holy Ghost when hands were laid on them in Acts 8 and in Acts 16. So, who needs the Holy Ghost? If it's that important, who needs the Holy Ghost? Number one, religious leaders need the Holy Ghost. When you look at the 12 apostles who were with Jesus for three and a half years, they healed the sick. They cast out devils, but yet they needed the Holy Ghost. Just because they could cast out devils didn't take them away from needing the Holy Ghost. They needed the Holy Ghost so desperately that Jesus told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. And in Acts 1, 13 through 14, and Acts 2, 1 through 4, we find that they did, in fact, receive the Holy Ghost, and they did it with the evidence of speaking with tongues. And in... February the 7th, 1957, I tell you, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when I did, I spoke with tongues. I started preaching and I started in Minden, Louisiana. And the interns know my whole story about that. But I started in, uh, excuse me, in uh, uh, Winfield, Louisiana. And uh, God gave us a great revival. I won't go into that because of time. But uh, three revivals later, after weeks and people getting the Holy Ghost, Brother Barnes called me, and he invited me to Minden, Louisiana. And we started a revival there. And he told me one night, he leaned over to me, I was preaching on the Holy Ghost, and I was preaching what God was going to do. And he leaned over to me, and he told me there were two men of another denomination, pastors from another denomination, that pastored churches in the surrounding area of Minden, and that they had heard about the revival and what God was doing, and they'd come to see this phenomenon that was happening and so I didn't know anything any better I was just 19 years old just getting out of a, 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 a preaching mode and, and going by what dad had taught me and I got up there and I've just preached about the Holy Ghost the best I could with love and with compassion and I didn't know a lot of big vocabulary words and those I didn't know I just made up and acted like I did I don't think they knew the difference either so we just kept going and when I gave the altar call I, I looked, and these two men, wives, grabbed them by the hand, and they, they sort of shook it loose. Well, the wives just came on down anyway. Well, when they did, we got behind them, and one of them's name was Hicks. I remember that. And they came down the front, and I began to instruct them how to receive the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, I gave the command, and God baptized their wives with the Holy Ghost. And then I looked, and another that pastor began to speak with tongues. Well, Brother Hicks couldn't get it. So he came back the next night, and all four of them were back the next night. It was in the middle of the week. Back then, we went revivals Tuesday through Sunday. And if you went to a good church, you went Sunday through Sunday. And so we were having revival, and they were coming back. Man, we were having this great time, and, and, and all of a sudden, uh, Brother Hicks couldn't get the Holy Ghost. So he got home one night, 
and, and he was praying on his side of the bed and she was praying on her side of the bed and all of a sudden she got to praying and got to talking in tongues and he jumped right in the middle of the bed and grabbed her and said stop it or either tell me how to do it <laughs> she looked at him and said well if you let go and let God touch you the spirit of God's on you she reached over and laid hands on her husband and he began to speak with tongue as the spirit of God gave him the utterance <laughs> religious leaders got the Holy Ghost Brother Hicks became a licensed United Pentecostal Church preacher. To those of you visiting with us that don't have the Holy Ghost, you're getting ready to get the greatest thing that's ever happened in your life. So religious leaders need the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what religion. Religious leaders need the Holy Ghost. Another group of people that need the Holy Ghost are those that are highly favored and blessed people. They need the Holy Ghost. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in Luke 1, 28, he said, Hail, thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Five times. Would everybody say five? Five times in chapter 1, we see that Mary was blessed by God. But yet God significantly told Mary to go to the upper room. To my friends here, that of another denomination, that Mary is very important in your worship. Let me tell you that Mary spoke with tongues. She was a tongue talker. She was one of the 120. If it was not for you, why would Jesus, that we know from the cross that he loved his mother so dearly, why would he ask her, or let me rephrase that, why would he command her to go to the upper room and get an experience that she was going to be made fun of? She had done been scorned when she told them that what was inside of her was not of Joseph. She had already been laughed at. Why would Jesus ask her to go be laughed at again if it was not essential and important? He told her to go to that upper room and let God baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And people that love God and people that are blessed, they still need the Holy Ghost and speak with tongues. If you're with us tonight and you're a sincere religious person and you say, I don't know about all that, Just let me tell you, religious people in the Bible got the Holy Ghost. Saul of Tarsus was sincere and zealous toward God. And the Bible said he was exceeding mad against Christians in Acts 22. Yet he loved God. After Damascus rode in Canaan with Jesus, Ananias came to him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight. And here's the key. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. One of the greatest theologians that you will find in the word of God was Paul. And yet God told him, you've got to receive the Holy Ghost. I thank God for your religion. I thank God for all your traditions. I thank God for the way that you have loved me in the way that you have known to love me. But I want to tell you that I've got something more for you than just religion. I've got something more for you than mother and daddy's religion. I've got an experience that's going to touch your life And that's going to change it forever. The Sheltons are a wonderful family. Here's what's great about this. We're believing you're going to get the Holy Ghost here tonight. But if I can't convince you of it, you're going to get it. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. We're going to put the hounds of heaven on you. You may not get it now, but you're not going to get away from what you feel. You're going, you're going to be going somewhere and all of a sudden you're going to, you're going to look down and you're going to remember, uh-oh, it's 7.20. I remember feeling what I was feeling. And you know what? I don't know that I believe all that, but I know I felt something. And you know what's going to happen? You may pull over the side of the road and God baptize you with the Holy Ghost right there. We had the Shelton family in our church and Brother Shelton couldn't get the Holy Ghost. And he was driving that tractor and he was plowing his field. He was a farmer in Louisiana. He was plowing his field. He said, God, everybody in my family has the Holy Ghost. And I hadn't been going to the front and I hadn't really been wanting it, but God, I really do want it. And he said, I repent of everything. Would you baptize me? And while he was driving that tractor, God baptized him with the Holy Ghost. I had a cousin, my cousin Rayford, 
He could not get the Holy Ghost. And he lived in Dallas. And he was on the tow road between Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas. And he got to play in his music. And the Holy Ghost got on him. He pulled over on that tow road. He got in the back seat. He said, God, I've been seeking for it in church. I've been trying to get it at all camp meetings. And it seemed like I can't get it. But I'm not leaving here until you baptize me with the Holy Ghost. And on the tow road between Dallas and Fort Worth, God baptized him with the Holy Ghost. Religious people get the Holy Ghost. Blessed people get the Holy Ghost. They all want the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you this. Praying and fasting, wonderful, giving people get the Holy Ghost. Cornelius was a devout, praying, fasting, generous man who needed the Holy Ghost. This God-fearing Gentile needed the Holy Ghost so desperately that God sent to him Apostle Peter, the man with the keys to the kingdom, to preach to him so that he and all of his household could receive the Holy Ghost and be saved. And the Bible says, while Peter was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them and they began to speak with tongues and magnify God. You know the story. Your pastors have taught it to you inside and out. That is the Gentiles. And the reason why they were not baptized first in the book of Acts is because if they would have baptized a Gentile before they received the Holy Ghost, they would have never had an opportunity. But when those Jews looked back and saw a Gentile throw up his hands and that God had filled him with the Holy Ghost, that's why they said anything else God wants to do, we're going to turn him loose to do it. So let me tell you in this congregation, if you're here tonight, if you're praying people, if you're fasting people, if you give to God, if you love God with all your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, if you go to his word every day, if you're a person of prayer, but yet you've never received the Holy Ghost, tonight is your night. It's not to get you to join this church. It's to get Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's to baptize you with an experience like you've never had. Those that have been healed, well, I, don't, I know I don't need it because I, uh, I have been healed and delivered uh, by the Holy Ghost. And I could reference that and say, well, thank God for that because that happened in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 8, verses 7 through 8, unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many Samaritans that were possessed of them. And many taken with palsy that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. They had repented. They had joy. They had people that was given, getting, uh, getting healing. But Peter and John came from Jerusalem and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Even in the midst of healing, even in the midst of the mighty outpouring, even in the midst when everybody was happy and shouting and dancing and praising God, they hadn't spoken with tongues yet. God said, even though you're doing all of that, and I may be doing signs and wonders in your church or in your life, I still have the baptism of the Holy Ghost that you need. For as yet, it had fallen on none of them. And God baptized them with the Holy Ghost. Long-standing church members need the Holy Ghost. If you've been a member of a church for a long time, no way would we cast stones at your church. Thank you for the love that you have for God. Thank you for whatever that pastor, that teacher has put in you of truth from the Word of God that we rejoice over. But in Acts chapter 19, they were asked, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I'm enjoying preaching tonight. You know why I'm enjoying it? Because it feels like I'm teaching and I didn't know I could even teach. In Acts 19, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Good point right here. Which means they didn't get the Holy Ghost when they believed. It means it was something that came even after they believed. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he has done a work in your life. But that is not a, the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost comes when you begin to speak a heavenly language as the Spirit of God gives the evidence. And then Paul asked him a very important question. He said, how then were you baptized? And he said, we were baptized under John's baptism. How many, who, who, how many in this building thinks that's John the Baptist? Would you raise your hand? You believe that was John the Baptist? I, I believe that was John the Baptist. I do. It's okay. I know I caught you off guard there. Now let me re-ask that question. That John in chapter 19, do you believe that was John the Baptist, right? Okay, I do too. So let me ask you this question. Who baptized Jesus? 
Who baptized Jesus? John the Baptist. These people huh, have been baptized like Jesus. But Paul said they need to be baptized again. Because we got to get the name called over you. People that have been baptized like Jesus had been baptized. When they got the revelation of the Holy Ghost and baptism in the name of Jesus, they got the Holy Ghost and they got baptized in Jesus. So you're going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. It's going to fall on you. It started in my family years ago. My, my grandfather was a very religious man. They were some of the greatest Christians that you would want to meet. And they were in Plymouth, Indiana. <clears throat> and my grandfather and my grandmother were leaders in this particular uh, denominational church in Plymouth, Indiana. And uh, there was three preachers. I can see my daddy preaching about it now at Harvey Lake and other camps. There were three preachers that came to that, that town. They put up a brush harbor. And one night, my grandmother harnessed up. Daddy said it was a Reno was the horse's name and the buggy, and she went to that, that meeting. And when they gave the altar call, she went to the front, and God baptized her with the Holy Ghost. And she got such a dose of the Holy Ghost that, I mean, she was drunk in the spirit. Finally, she goes out, gets her horse and the buggy, and she gets home. And she starts planning because they were very well respected. My grandfather was the head deacon. He was the song leader of this church. They were very well respected. And if you will know, back in that day and time, you didn't nearly about uh, associate with a holy roller. And so it was, it was a significant thing that had happened to her. So she planned her night. She said, when I get home, I'll just take the door and, and turn it real quietly. And, and then I'll just go in there and I'll slip in bed. And he's already asleep and he won't even know I'm there. And all of a sudden, she did real well, put the horse and buggy up. She got to the back door. She opened up that door. And when she did, that's why I told you the hounds of heaven's going to be after you. She got in her kitchen and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost hit her. And she said, whoa, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And my grandfather came running out. He said, what's wrong with you? She said, I got to tell you what happened to me. I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God has filled me with the Holy Ghost. I spoke with tongues. He said, you did what? She said, I got the Holy Ghost. It's on me right now. I thank God I got the Holy Ghost. He said, you go sleep in the bedroom. I'm going to sleep on the couch. And so for the next day, he wouldn't even speak to her. He was done. You have ruined our name. You have taken the name Mangan, and you have messed this name up. You've gotten this uh, experience that they say, and you have ruined me in this community. And so the next morning, the pastors came to check on their new saint. And my grandfather was out in the field, and she said, Sirs, please leave. If my husband sees you here, it's going to be a bad night. And they said, Where is he? He said, Out there in the field. Well, those two preachers just went walking out there, and the other ones went... And all of a sudden, my grandfather came, saw them coming. He started practicing what he was going to do to those preachers. And when he got there, he threw his hands up and said, Yeah, I want what my wife's got. Would you pray for me? And God baptized him with the Holy Ghost out in the field. That's what's going to happen here tonight. And it's going to be a family change. My grandfather pastored the same church for 52 or 3 years. He started the church in Plymouth, built it. They had a growing congregation. All because God baptized him with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And you know, in some churches, people just get the Holy Ghost, but there's a conjunction there. It says Holy Ghost and fire. I'm glad when I got it, I got the Holy Ghost and fire. And when you, you, you think we're crazy, pray for us that we get worse. Because when you touch fire, you touch your hot stove, you can say, ouch, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, praise God. If you've got fire set up in your bone, it's thank you, Jesus. It's hallelujah. It's like my brother that comes down that aisle. I'm going to tell you what. He's got the Holy Ghost and fire right here. I can tell you that right here. Well, I shouldn't have asked for this, should I? Well, I asked for that, didn't I? That's what it ought to make you do. That's what it ought to make you do. There's nothing like the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like the Holy Ghost. If you're not here, you're going to leave here with the Holy Ghost. I believe God's going to baptize all of y'all with the Holy Ghost tonight. You're going to speak with tongues tonight. It's going to be a life-changing night with you and the Holy Ghost.
Nothing like the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like it. It's the greatest thing that you've ever had. It's the greatest thing you could ever receive. Paul said, liars, why do we act like we act? Paul said, liars, adulterers, and fornicators, and drunkards, but such were some of you. But you've been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. And when you're looking at liars and adulterers and drunkards that's sitting in these pews and you expect us just to sit there and we can't express our emotions, let me tell you, we can't help but express our emotions when God has baptized us with the Holy Ghost inside of us that has changed our lives. as crazy as you think. Let's just do a little test right here, okay? Let's just do a little test on, on who may be a little off bubble. <laughs> if we as Christians, you say you're going to a city whose builder and maker is God, and there is no more sorrow, sickness, pain, or death. There is no more heartache. There is no new pain. There is nothing else that you'll have to endure that is down in time. You'll be free from it all. Then you expect us just to sit there and hear a pin drop when it not on your life. When I get to thinking about what he's done for me and I get to thinking about where I'm going, that old boy used to say, my soul cries out, hallelujah. John Bennett, John Bennett in Alexandria, he was one of the top dope dealers in Alexandria a few years ago. I mean one of the top street guys in Alexandria. And he was pushing drugs. Uh, the police department got together, did a sting on him, busted him, put him in jail. He got bond and bonded, bonded out. When he bonded out, he came to church. And when he came down the altar, he got the Holy Ghost. And his court date was a few months away, and he started living the life. And we started working with him, put him through all the courses. And all of a sudden, he decided he wanted to join the choir. And, brother, he was a shouting machine. He loved praising God. And we put him in the choir, and he was up there singing. He had just worshiped God. Well, during the political season, Brother Woodward to tell you a little bit, our, our church is very high profile in our city and in the state of Louisiana. And during that particular time, our U.S. congressmen and U.S. senators come, and usually those that's running for governor will come by, and it's quite a, a time for those couple of months ahead of election. And so it was happening at, at, at uh, the POA, and my mother had sung, and it was the deadest service I'd ever been in. When my mother can't crank a service, it just can't be cranked. <laughs> it's Pat's cranking when she can't crank it. Daddy put Ruby up there. He, I, I didn't think, I, maybe he must not have prepared that night because he wasn't ready to preach or something. He put everybody up there, I guess, hoping the service was ready. And it was dead as it could be. It was dead, dead. And, and all of a sudden, Dad gets up to preach. And when he walks up to preach, John stands up. Here is, you know, senators, congressmen, people running for mayor and city council. We got quite a few there. And all of a sudden, judges that he's going to be standing before he stands up on the choir pew. He said, Pastor, there's a new man walking in my shoes. And when he did, what daddy couldn't crank, what mother couldn't crank, what Ruby couldn't crank, what Mickey couldn't crank, what Anthony couldn't crank, God cranked. I mean, people start getting the holy. Daddy didn't get to preach. That, nobody else got to sing. People started falling all over the elected officials and those that were running for office. They were praising God with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He comes to his court time. He goes to court. And the judge that he was appearing in front of, he saw him after church that night, was at that service. He said, I'll see you in court in a couple of weeks. <laughs> he said, Pastor, that's not too hot, is it? I said, well, it didn't sound too hot, but we'll see what's done there. So he goes to court. When they walk in the room, the judge tears up. He said, I've been doing this kind of work for years and never have I seen anybody's life change like this man's life was changed. He said, I want him turned loose. I want his record completely wiped clean. He's never done, he had done a bunch of stuff. You wipe his record clean because that man's life has been changed. And he died full of the Holy Ghost. 
with what the things that God had done. Is there anybody in this room that when you came here, you were bound by a chemical? Would you stand and just clap your hand? You were bound by alcohol or drugs? There was something. Would you just stand? Would you just praise God? Come on, just praise God where you are right there. Would you just praise God where you are right there? Just keep standing. Those of you, well, go ahead, brother. There's nothing wrong with that. We love running about what God's done for us. Don't judge another man's worship till you know what he's been delivered from. Don't judge his worship till you know what he's done. Don't judge his worship until you know where he came from. Those of you that came from another religion, you were a Christian, you loved the Lord before you ever got to keep standing. Would you stand and join them? You, you, you came from another religion, would you start praising God? Would all of you praise God just a moment? Come on, praise God together. Those of you that had never been in anything, this was your first encounter with Christ. Would you stand and praise God with them? Those of you that was raised in this, you were dedicated to God, but God has filled you with the Holy Ghost. Would you stand and give praise to God? Would all of us stand and give glory and praise to the King of kings and the Lord of lords? It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. I promise you, church, you got to help me just a moment. Don't leave me, elders. Don't leave me right here. It's getting ready to happen. God's getting ready to pour the Holy Ghost out in a significant way here tonight. If you don't mind, and I, I don't do this often, and if pastor teaches you against this, he will straighten you out Wednesday night when I'm gone. Because I don't do this often at POA. Very seldom do I do this. But would you turn to somebody and ask them, do you have the Holy Ghost evidence for speaking with other tongues? Would you ask them that? I'm asking you to do that. Would you do that for me? Okay. Here we go. Here we go, everybody. If they tell you no, would you say, come on and go with me? We're going to go to the front of the church. Well, go ahead, sister. That's okay. Go ahead and talk in tongues back there. That's okay. If somebody told you no, would you bring... It's going to... Come on, right there. Isn't this wonderful? Come on, take them by the hand if they told you no. And bring them on to the front of the church. God's going to, we believe God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost tonight. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. Isn't this wonderful? Those of you that hadn't spoken with tongues, come on. Thank you, young people, for bringing people. Come on, people, stand right here. Say, come on, buddy, you're going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. Come on, ladies. That's it. Come on, ma'am, bring them in here. You're going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. That's it. You're going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. You didn't get it this morning. You're going to get it tonight. Which one of you doesn't have the Holy Ghost? You're going to get it tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus. We're going to speak it by the gift of faith that God's going to feel. Come on, ladies. Come on over here. That's it. Come on, young people. This is wonderful. That's it. Just keep coming over here. Come over here with me. That's it. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Come on, baby. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost tonight. We're going to believe you. Come up here. You children are present. That's it. Get, get right on up here. That's it. They're still coming. I saw y'all when y'all came to church tonight. And you know what? Come here, ma'am. I saw you when you came in tonight. And I, I told Pastor, I said, have they gotten the Holy Ghost? And he said, I really don't know yet. And I said, well, they're going to get it tonight. And you're going to begin to speak. What language do you speak other than English? French. You know what? You're going to speak something that's not English and it's not French. It's going to be an unknown tongue. And you know what? There's not going to be a professor that teaches you. It's going to be the Holy Ghost that teaches you. And you're going to be able to speak as the Spirit gives you the other. we got a great crew up here. And we believe that God's going to baptize. And we believe that God's going to baptize. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else that may have been a little scared to come? We believe that God. Come on, keep coming. We're waiting. Isn't this wonderful? I don't want to leave. You got a child that needs the Holy Ghost tonight? Bring your children. We believe that God's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. 
I need this church to help me just for a moment. Would you gather in and gather around all of them? Just get as close as you can. Come all the way down those aisles because we're getting ready to do what we did this morning. Would everybody in this church help me come to the front right now? Would you come? Like I said this morning, if you want to go to heaven, come to the altar just a moment. I'm not going to hold you long. I'm going to turn this to pastor. But God's going to do it great. That lady's still having a great blessing of the Holy Ghost. She can't already contain herself back there. Thank you, church, for coming. That's it. Come on. Those of you visiting pastors, come on with us tonight. If you've got people with you, that's it. Bring the babies. Get close to God. Okay, listen to me now just a moment. I'm going to explain this to you, okay? This is very simple. It's very simple. I did it this morning, but it's very simple. First thing that we have to do is we believe that he can baptize us with the Holy Ghost. And we've got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We've got to believe that. We've got to believe that when we ask God to forgive us, that he will forgive us of all of our sins. Because we can't get the Holy Ghost unless our sins are forgiven. And let me explain something right here. Forgiveness is not remission. Forgiveness is like I would spill, and I don't know why I'm doing all this. I guess I'm in this teaching mode that I never get on when I go places to preach. But if this was ink and I would walk in your house and, and I would spill this ink on your carpet and it would do that. And I would look at you, I'd say, please forgive me. And you'd say, sure, Pastor Mangan, you're forgiven. And then me and the Woodwards would eat or drink coffee, whatever we came to your house to do. But when I left, that spot would still be there until the service masters, the cleaning people came with their chemicals to get it out. God forgives you here, but they're not remitted. It's when you get in the name of Jesus and he puts you under, that he comes and takes over. He washes it with the sink. That's why tonight, you just don't want to ask God to forgive you before you leave here, even if you don't get the Holy Ghost. Because in the Acts 2, he said, Repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall. When you get baptized in Jesus' name, it becomes a shall. It removes to just the Holy Ghost. It becomes you shall. So if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, even your children, you want to get them baptized because it becomes a shall. Okay? So repentance. And then it takes the faith that you're good enough to get it and that God's going to give it to you. And then I'm going to give the command and I'll do like I did this morning. This church is going to help me shout and we believe that everyone, we're going to talk in, how many talked in tongues this morning? Would you raise your hand? Look at that. Look, look around. Look around at you. They all talked in tongues this morning and they're going to talk in tongues tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to repent again, ma'am. God's going to feel you. I'm believing. I know you're here this morning, but I'm believing God. I'm believing God with you. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And then we're, when I get through, we get through repenting, I'm going to stop and talk to you again. Then I'm going to give the command, and this church is going to shout. You think they've been loud. They're getting ready to get loud. And we're going to shout to the Lord, and God's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen? We believe on this mission service, what this church sent two, three hundred thousand dollars a year around the world to do, it's for this right here. We live for this moment right here. This is what our life is for right here. People gave thousands of dollars this morning. This church committed to almost three hundred thousand dollars for us to do what we're doing right here tonight. This is mission night. This is mission. So right now, the way you pray, the way you pray, buddy, the way you pray, you just ask the Lord to forgive you. Church, would you help me now? Would you raise your hand? Let's all begin to repent. As you would talk, God, forgive me of every sin. That's it. Just like you would talk to me or talk to your father. That's it. I'm not going to leave. That's it. You're doing great. Forgive me, God. Look into my heart. Any sin there, God, forgive me of all of my sins. I ask you to forgive me, great God, of everything that I've ever said or done. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. I ask you, any, anything I've said, jealousy, envy, strife, any sins, God, that we don't see as major sin, we need to be forgiven of all of our sins. Forgive us, God, as we seek your face right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, li listen, listen to Pastor just a moment. Listen to me just a moment. How many of you believe that he's a big enough God and that he loves you enough that he just forgave you. Would you, everybody that believes this room, he just forgave. I do too. I'm going to raise both of them. I believe he forgave me. So there is nothing hindering me from getting the Holy Ghost except myself. And when the Spirit of God gets on you, see, see how your hand's doing? Go ahead, keep, keep letting your hand do this. See how your hand's doing? You just let your tongue, you let your hands do that. Let your tongue do that. reason why God chose your tongue is because it's the most unruly member of your body. And he knows when he gets your tongue, he's got you. So just like you let, let your tongue do that in just a minute. It's okay. Let your tongue do that in just a minute. That means you yielded to him. And what now that you've repented and God's forgiven you of your sins. When I give you the command, 
I want you to throw your hands up and from your innermost being, I want you to begin to cry hallelujah, hallelujah. And then we believe that it's going to begin to speak as the Spirit gives you utterance. You're going to speak. Everybody say I. God's not going to come down and get your tongue. You're going to begin to speak as the Spirit gives you the utterance. As the Spirit leads you, you're going to begin to speak a heavenly language. Now I'm going to give you the command in church. You know what I do right here. When I give the command, don't you pray for anybody else. You pray for God to baptize you. And you let it be like a roar in Niagara Falls in here tonight when God baptizes us because we believe the command is going to come. Okay, those of you wanting the Holy Ghost, you ready? We believe that when we throw our hands up and we let that hallelujah go from our innermost being, God's going to fill us tonight. Oh, the authority of the power of the name of Jesus and by the authority, God, that you've given me to preach in, I command you to receive the Holy Ghost and speak with tongues. Come on, church. Let a shout go up. That's it, church. Move in, pastors. That's it.